Hi everyone, the Lone Wolf here and welcome back to Eve Talk, your weekly look at the market in EVE Online and well news wise definitely a pretty big week. Not only did we get the launch for the Viridian expansion but CCP added uh, something new for HiSec that uh, was with a lot of consequences all of a sudden. So CCP no longer allows Excel extra large structures to be deployed in HiSec, something that actually I think a large part of the player base has been asking for for a very long time. But this has really started a chain of reactions that has caused basically the full collapse of the Tranquility Trading Coalition and thus the Tranquility Trading Towers, they are now numbers as uh, as far as I can tell the Imperium has basically uh, decided to pull out of the agreement war decked uh, the uh, holding uh, corporation and is, is basically going after the tranquility uh, trading tower so uh, that uh, Excel structure will not be uh, there for much longer this also means that a lot of evacuation has probably started when all of this uh, uh, was announced and, and when all of this was uh, happening in game um, and uh, then yeah I'm also seeing lots of war decks happening between large Gnostic groups and things like that it really does look like uh, this uh, this patch which actually just one major change well, there's probably other other uh, facets as well but one major change uh, that uh, has triggered a lot a lot of effects uh, in the sandbox the butterfly effect you could say uh, in full swing in EVE Online so it's gonna be I think a pretty interesting uh, summer uh, that's coming here for uh, for EVE Online this may also have a pretty big impact on the uh, market here in Jita. So let's get started uh, first with the new Eden store as well and then we'll dive into the market because we've got sales happening here as well. 20% off of Omega time. Uh, so this should I think uh, increase the demand for Plex. You also get a free package if you want. Now I'm uh, part of a program so I'm not gonna uh, take advantage of that but you basically get uh, seven days free Omega and then you get ten times the Eve marks for the missions that you do for a certain uh, amount of time. That's very nice for those that uh, want to have a little bit of a catch-up uh, possibility. You know, get back into the game, explore uh, what, uh, what the Omega subscription has to offer. And then also, you know, work your way to some of those Alliance logos, some of those Corporation logos, things like that for your ship. So that's definitely a nice little free deal here that might bring some players back and then, uh, yeah. Uh, Omega time itself is on sale of course to get people I think to to spend some of their Plex as well uh, just as uh, Plex is uh, no longer going to be traded too much in the TTT. So let's dive in then and we will of course start with pilot services that's coming in at three minutes. There we go and we will of course start with the Plex chart that's right here um, basically starting to move sideways after uh, the sale uh, that uh, massively increased demand pushed the price up to 5.5 million almost a five day moving average so we of course had to come back down from that but you can clearly see that uh, the price uh, range before that was around 4.5 million on the chart and we are settling quite a bit above that basically where the sellers were at before that highest price point has become the daily average and there should be a pretty narrow spread here if you look at the min max prices so let's take a look at that in Jita itself it's 4.9 million uh, for the sellers so just below the 5 million mark and 4.8 million for the buyers that is indeed a pretty narrow spread and then we still have some selling happening in the tranquility trading tower uh, going down just a little bit towards the 4.9 million and do we have more aggressive buyers well we still have some people actually trying to buy in the tranquility trading towers in pretty low numbers but uh, they are still there um, despite the fact, if I'm not mistaken, that the shield should be gone or something like that. So you should get a little bit of a warning. But uh, if uh, the armor timer is done, then I think struck, uh, the uh, services go down or something like that. Well, overall, it doesn't mean that we won't be able to trade from stations or uh, do industry from structures. Excuse me, not station, but from player structures anymore. But they'll have to be the large versions, which of course are far more easy to challenge. Right, An Excel uh, structure is something that is is basically meant to be challenged by capital and super capital fleets in high sec you can't deploy those and so that's why it's a very daunting task to try and knock one of those over when you go down to large ones i think it is doable with a large uh sub capital fleet and so that really does change the dynamic and on top of that i think uh, if i'm not mistaken that the 
uh, best possible bonuses for industry and research, for instance, are no longer available than in HiSec. It does differentiate the space. HiSec, you know, newer players, but you don't get the best bonuses. Do you want those best bonuses? Those massive structures? You gotta go to low, you gotta go to null, join large groups and take part of that part of the game. Uh, so for Plex, uh, I would say we are starting to move sideways and we're still dominated by the peak that happened with the sale. Uh, so here the TTT changes not showing uh, too much just yet. Next we have the uh, oh, skill extractors before we move on to the injectors. So those had the exact opposite because of the deal that was made. You could see that Plex shot up massively. That is because you got a two for one uh, in a new Eden store for the skill extractors. So that price crashed down substantially. We shot back up a little bit back above the 400 million mark. But here we are starting to move uh, sideways and even slightly down to a lower price point starting before that sale at 500 million uh, so clearly very large volumes are still keeping that price low and very large volumes here uh, has haven't recovered just yet making us uh, pay a little bit more for Plex at the moment. Skill Extractor is going for 413 million buyers at 387. They're still trying to open up that gap. That's actually quite a reasonable spread. And here now you can clearly see that the trade uh, it has moved uh, almost uh, completely to GDA 44. Tranquility Trading Tower uh, has uh, three sellers on the front page. Couple more down here as well. Um, not everyone can come online every day, of course. And then the buyers, well, they are all in GDA 4.4. No one is going to buy actual items that uh, cannot just be transferred straight back to your wallet, such as a Plex, uh, in the uh, TTT anymore. The impact on the large scale injectors is continued pressure. Very impressive here. Look at those uh, minimum prices taking a real dive. Daily averages as well. Uh, we're on 850 million over the last week. So those prices are going down. 880 million for the sellers, 850 for the first buyer, that going down to 844, 837. And yet again, here you can see someone is still trading the cheapest ones uh, with a, an 8 million discount here in the Tranquility Trading Tower. But that's pretty much it for most sellers and buyers who have all found their way back to NPC stations for that added security. And these small scale injectors should not be able to buck this kind of a trend. Exactly, you can see those daily averages going down to the 180 million uh, when we touched almost 200 million uh, less than a month ago. So that's also a substantial pullback. 176 for the sellers, 161 million for the buyers. So basically, we are already trading below this range at the moment. Uh, this is probably also due to supplies uh, coming in from uh, number one conversion of course of all those skill extractors but number two uh, possibly as well uh, some people having holdings in TTT uh, that are actually tied to Nelsec because obviously Nelsec was in uh, actual control of the Tranquility Trading Tower being the protectors. They also had income there, but that may have been uh, partly a motivator for them to also hold stuff in there. And if they now, uh, at least some of them, decide that, yeah, well, we're not going to be uh, doing that much in HiSec anymore, at least not when it comes to trading and holding, might as well pour it in our own alliance space uh, or in Jita, sell and then see that we become a little bit more mobile here. So massive supplies coming in for the injectors, bringing prices down. And then we've got the daily alpha injector that is continuing. This is really a surprise to me. A slow downward trend throughout all of this action. Although if I'm not mistaken, nothing special happened for the daily alpha injectors. Uh, volumes down as well. This might actually be because of the deal that's on the new Eden store. So you just click on this one. And then, uh, you know, uh, you can just uh, claim this one for free here. Seven days free Omega uh, might be like a week off from the daily alpha injector grind for a lot of players. He's bringing demand down, he's bringing volumes down. And yeah, lower volumes on lower prices, not very usual. 94 million for the sellers, 44 and a half million for the buyers. Below 50, I think that uh, everyone can actually be happy with that kind of a price point. And then finally, we've got the hyper cores that are shooting up quite a lot. Might also have something to do with the TTT, perhaps some emergency raffles, increasing demand uh, all of a sudden. Uh, being part of, of still our pretty high prices because we are selling well above 500,000 buyers at 472 we are slowly uh, stabilizing here though this is obviously also tied to the Plex peak with that uh, special sale that CCP held in a new Eden store we're settling high above the 500,000 but you can see sellers 5 
09 is not that much above that anymore 470 for the buyers trying to open that gap here with those minimum prices so here we are stabilizing a little bit despite all of the action that's happening around us so pretty interesting week here in the pilot services and a pretty sharp drop off actually for the skill injectors um, this feels quite substantial we'll see if, the, if it has legs or not next here we have the minerals of course coming in at 10 30. and there we go as always we start with titanium and pretty good news here for titanium if you uh, have been doing like the 50 50 that i've been recommending for quite a while because we are moving to a completely different range all of a sudden 4.3 is outside of jida in jida itself 4.5 for the sellers 433 for the buyers as well i think the read here from the market is that with the excel structures being gone um not that many or definitely not all manufacturers in HiSec will be willing to make the move to NullSec uh, or LowSec in order to get the best possible bonuses. Um, and so that means more demand for minerals because you've got lower efficiency uh, that's going to basically become mandatory in HiSec. And that means more consumption of minerals and thus here the price shoots up. If it's a little bit uniform, then I think that is really uh, what the market is expecting. So here is Pyrite. Uh, it's not that uniform. That one actually showing a bit of pressure at the tail end here although this one did recover well above the 10 isk and has been staying there 1040 for the sellers and above 10 for the buyers as well next one is the mexalon chart that one does have uh, a jump as everything was happening uh, i think here around the deployment of the expansion so jumping up when we were at 50 we are now selling at 54 so 10 percent jump almost 51 for the buyers those spreads remaining very very um narrow and clearly uh, a nice jump up in two of the three high sick minerals we try titanium the biggest winner uh, at this point i would take advantage of uh, these prices try to sell maybe even uh, some of my extra holdings you don't know if this kind of a price is something that the market can maintain but if it can weather this storm for let's say a week then i do think we are in that new range because of everything that's happening with the viridian expansion in low sec we've got isogen that's doing a reverse move that's a pretty massive drop off big volumes bringing the price down from 600 to 500 is and it's been a while since we've seen that kind of an action but i have been warning uh, for a while as well that isogen may no longer be on a straight upwards trajectory because of us chewing through those reserves and active uh, demand and supply can have uh, swings in both directions uh, so this is probably exactly what's happening here 515 for the sellers 503 for the buyers some pretty big selling perhaps also tied to what's happening with the ttt and if we now go down to find that huge uh, sell order maybe it's even been removed yeah because i'm not seeing the billions of units in this list anymore uh, so whoever did that i think gave up seeing what was happening here yeah pre pretty big dumping of isogen here um bringing the price back down hopefully this can give high manufacturers a little bit of breathing room uh now that they're most efficient potentially most efficient there's also the cost and things like that involved but potentially most efficient uh, way of manufacturing might just be over then we've got the uh oh no first it's noxium that's also back on the 900 so clearly we had a little bit of a bump here in the run-up to the expansion once the expansion hits for low sick minerals i think everyone uh, sort of agrees that yeah nothing too special is happening here uh we might actually be well supplied 900 disc for the sellers actually below that and 884 for the buyers that's still a pretty narrow spread here but we basically have a little bit of a a pre-expansion bump that has been completely absorbed by the market and then here we uh spoilers were already given but yeah in null sec we've got zydrine that's heading back for 2500 disc touch 3k a couple of weeks ago so this is definitely a sharp pullback as well 2600 for the sellers 2400 for the buyers and you actually get average prices around 25 so you actually get some buyers uh grabbing some of that zydrine as well 
and then for mega site we are plateauing and starting to see a little bit of pressure as we cross the 4000 again but this time on the downside so sellers are now below 4000 disc buyers at 37 so for mega sites people are pretty damn desperate but overall uh, it does look like the upward trend for mega site has been stopped here and then we get more fights that one continuing to go down as well well i tried to do a little bit of a recovery as we went very low here to 36000 on uh, a daily average but uh, after that in the last couple of days more pressure mounting 38,000 for the sellers and buyers let's actually see if there's anything happening around here when well, there's one small buyer in in the ttt still but that's it 35,500 for most buyers of more fight so the pressure is on for uh, some of the low sec and null sec minerals and uh, high sec seems to be getting a little bit of a better price at the moment will all of this last difficult to say uh, the market and the player base in general tend to be pretty adaptable to most situations so uh, honestly uh, for both uh, Tritanium and Mexilon, I would I would sell and I would perhaps even sell a little bit above what I'm making uh, going through those reserves to try and get that better price going we'll see if uh, the price can actually survive that kind of action next up the PI market coming in at 16 minutes there we go and as always we'll take a look at the list here anything really changing on well, the minimum prices for the broadcast notes are starting to come down it seems at least on a couple of these days and we are not able to get back above 2.5 million we're pretty close though above 2.4 million for the sellers and look at that buyers dropping off to 1.9 that is definitely a pretty big change uh, volume wise we are up i'm thinking here perhaps we need a little bit of time to really gauge what's going to happen because um, if i remember correctly a, at least a decent chunk of pi trading happened was happening in the ttt as well take a quick look and see if anything is happening here we still have one seller look at that discount uh, but that's not in the TTT that's quite a way everything is happening in Jita now and then for the buyers we still have one buyer uh, in the TTT here that's basically uh, we, which we bumped into I think for the uh, for the buyers uh, from uh, from Jita 44 so I think these are in all likeliness buy orders that um, that are going to uh, that are held by players that have just haven't been online yet to be able to adapt to the new situation there but other than that obviously even for uh, a good um, as uh, as common as pi i think everything is moving back to gda 44 at the moment next up we've got the construction blocks that are well that did a little bit of a peak but look at those daily averages down here clearly also trying to go back down 12,000 now for the sellers that is a bit of pressure there 11 3 for the buyers narrow spread but this is actually still a pretty damn good price it's just not the highest range of the year anymore above 12,500 Cullen's doing the same actually did that a little bit early here but also settled at around 12,500 uh, 13,000 actually now for the sellers 12 7 for the buyers bit of upward pressure here that can still happen uh, but overall we're again not at a peak price anymore enriched uranium then same story here peaked at around almost 20k and is currently selling for 15,000 disc 14,000 for the buyers that is still very expensive a great price for those that are building these pi materials but uh, it's not the highest price of the year anymore integrity response drones that's a pretty sharp drop off clearly something changed here as well i think um you just you can't manufacture that much into the capital space anymore or not that easily or that efficiently uh so this could really be a high sec null sec difference here uh for the advanced pi materials but yeah 2.8 million for the sellers 2.6 million for the buyers when we were trading at 3.5 million at the start of the month very very sharp drop off here in advanced pi materials then we get the mechanical parts those are holding quite nicely above 12,500. 14k in fact for the sellers bit of spread opening up here but overall still a great price miniature electronics holding at 17.5 18 actually for the sellers 17.5 for the buyers and then our nano factories are holding on at one actually up for the week here heading for 1.5 million very interesting organic motor applicators going completely ballistic very mixed picture not really what i expected here but 
but yeah 2.3 million for the sellers 1.5 million for the buyers if you get some of those you definitely might want to sell for a profit there our uh, recursive computing module a little bit of pressure but nothing too dramatic here 2.6 to 2.4 million our robotics a little bit down for the week on this one still above 100,000 quite healthily though 111 almost for the sellers 105 for the buyers rocket fuels up slightly for the week heading back for 15,000 almost there for the sellers so still very expensive self harmonizing power cores bit of pressure here right not able to maintain 2.5 million anymore it's 2.4 to 2.3 so that's still definitely quite expensive and then our smart fab units continuing uh, the crazy volatility as volumes shoot up here currently selling for 135,000 super expensive here sterile conduits pretty flat so that's not bad supercomputers finally one of those specialized pi materials that's also coming back down but it's it's the same story right we were at 150,000 disc which is like 50 percent above what i would call a normal price for this type of an item we're now at 113,000 to 103 for the buyers this is still a great price it's just not the highest price range of the year anymore then we get our synthetic oils uh, actually first one that might be below 10k sellers are still at 10 10,000 but buyers 7500 so that's a pretty sharp drop off in demand uh, while volumes are increasing that could be interesting here synthetic synapses are still super expensive look at that almost 150,000 on the chart same story for the sellers here transcranial microcontrollers uh, it's below 130 but again still very expensive at the highest range water cooled CPU coming down a little bit uh, but here again on the one year you can see how much we have gained in value over the last year 13,200 very expensive here and finally the wetware mainframes doing a little bit of a bump actually in the last week or so still at 2.7 to 2.6 million so a little bit more volatility a little bit more of a mixed picture we clearly have one uh, winner in the advanced PI materials but we also have one major loser in the advanced PI materials so that is something that we haven't seen for a very long time two from this segment that are doing completely opposite things uh, and then the others when we're seeing I think a little bit of exhaustion in the markets that that was from time to time that that poked through on some of the items I think we're seeing it in a little bit more of them where demand is dropping off buyers are trying to push the prices back down so for quite a few at least of the refined PI materials were away from that highest range of the year uh, but we're still super expensive you're still getting very very nice prices for your PI efforts next up advanced moon materials 2240 there we go let's start as always with the carbides we've got crystalline carbonite for a galente crazy jump to three on the disc not sure where this comes from perhaps because of the ttt but i don't know i think most of this has always been traded in gda itself so i don't think so 268 to 215 perhaps all of the uh imperium uh war marching orders and all of the war decks that are happening are, are having an impact here uh perhaps part of the uh, tranquility ttc i believe it is tranquility trading coalition uh, has also been tied around moon mining um and these advanced movements or something like that and that 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 kind of a cartel uh is breaking because that is something that is definitely part of of this this uh um uh, this segment uh, is that this is completely dominated by Nelsic, of course. Um, you get some moons in low and high sec, but it's really the output is coming from Nelsic, and so you get that cartel position that they have that they uh, sometimes happily take advantage of. And if, if something like that is breaking, it's potentially complete pandemonium, of course. 268 to 215, so yeah, highest price point of the year. For those that were very patient throughout all of this and have invested in the first three, four months of the year, you are looking at a nice 160%, no, not 160, but clearly above 100% profit at the moment. Uh, so this is, this is basically the sell opportunity that we would have loved to see in the December nerf. Uh, it is here now with the Viridian expansion, at least for crystalline carbonite. Next up, we've got titanium carbide for 
Kaldari and this will probably become uniform across the board 238 for the sellers 200 disc for the buyers one year high point so you can definitely again here take a nice 100 plus percent profit if you're still holding carbides I'm definitely gonna rummage through everything I have in all of the trade hubs uh, to, to see uh, what's uh, what's there then for uh, Minmatar we get our Fernite Carbite that also shoots up only just to the one year high point so clearly Minmatar not the most popular part here 153 to 131 but you still have a 50% profit to take at the moment and then for Amar that is a pronounced one year high point going at 236 is to 216 so again above 100% profit here is your nice trade it's only over one year of course but uh, pretty damn nice profits for people to take are the meta materials in the same situation let's take a look galente first here is photonic meta materials well, it's a little bit slower and steady but 15,000 disc has been reached 14,000 now for the seller then 14 6 so you're getting very close to that 14k almost for the buyers as well and you could have bought below 7.5 which is what I did. I'm not sure if I'm still holding some because I did sell here, I believe. But overall here, you get another 100% trade that is on the chart. Uh, if you're holding them, you're looking pretty damn good. Then we have uh, Galdari with non-linear mana materials. Oof, very, very sharp uh, jump up here from 15k doubling now to almost 30,000 for the sellers, 26,000 for the buyers. You're gonna have to be fast. But here we're talking 10,000 as the best price. So that's a 200% potential profit right here in nonlinear meta materials. And this to me uh, is, is the logic that I was sort of uh, looking for when I decided to do most of my investments. Uh, it was in the uh, meta materials because they are more complex. They are later down the chain going for 10K rather than just a couple hundred discs like the carbides. Uh, that should, with that complexity, uh, I saw that as potentially a multiplier for volatility um, down the line in, in the in the simpler items and i think that's what's happening right here jumping up to 30k crazy price and that's a 200 percent profit right there uh, then we've got minmatar which is plasmonic metamaterials also reaching a one-year high point uh, but again less than most of the others 17k to 15k lowest price point below 10k so you get another 50 60 percent profit here and then terahertz metamaterials same story one year high point already coming down a bit but 20 thousands is on the books here because the buyers are there as well waiting and willing to pay that kind of a price so that's another 100 percent trade took a very long time but here it is advanced move materials are in a profit zone for sure the others do we have yes we do uh, seemingly have um, a week where this segment with the Viridian expansion is just uniformly gonna be moving up for me on the condensates for from a range below 50,000 disc moving to 100,000 disc another 100% profit right there ferrogel not moving all right interesting so it's not all of them ferrogel still at 30,000 is still in a great place on the one year chart though 15 to 30 uh, to 30k yep that's another you know 100% on the chart fullerites does jump up was below 700 if i'm not mistaken last week 1400 so that's doubling in price here as well hypersynaptic fibers not a doubling although 4k to almost 8k uh, and that's there 7000 currently for the sellers one year high point it's not bad nano transistors is not moving so this one is still at 3200 to 2800 i mean it's a little bit more expensive but it's not a one-year high point or really a price doubling or anything like that Phenoly composites does its jump starts the year at 1000 ends the year at 2200 not bad at all we've got our pressurized oxidizers that uh, basically went from 75 to 12.5 and are still in that range um, and our reinforced carbon fibers 7.5 to 12.5 they're still you know you could have basically sold them in the last couple of months no problem ceramic fibers also a jump up to 635 isk started the year at 250 so uh yeah if you hold it if you're holding advanced moon materials i mean i would be a little bit careful with the volumes but you are definitely looking at pretty massive 
profits on most of the stuff that you bought over the last year um yeah big big move here with the viridian expansion my theory would be that as a fallout of uh no longer being able to uh, uh have excel structures in high sec you've got the whole cartel breaking down and so you get the war drums beating uh which means that potentially uh, an agreement around uh, advanced blue materials has been broken as well take two ships then that could be interesting as well because i'm still holding some of those that's coming in at 29.55 let's go and let's see if these are responding immediately well i mean the basilisk is trying look at today's daily average seems to be above 180 million 180 for the sellers 153 for the buyers so it's not great but you are selling very close to the highest point of the year so if you have bought and you have been patient in the basilisk you are looking at profits but uh, let's take a look uh, through the rest of the chart and see if we can expect perhaps more volatility i think that could be on the books now if we look at advanced move materials uh, Cerberus was already slowly heading in that direction but is also currently trading at 175 million 150 for the buyers so clearly the highest trade range of the year is almost there not yet but almost there so there is no massive jump up here just yet uh, the curse also still basically was on a downward cycle is stopping that downward cycle but nothing too major happening here 184 to 163 million next here is our damnation so at the moment i would say nope everything that's happening in advanced move materials is not immediately happening in the take to ship market just yet which perhaps means that you can take positions the damnation chart here looks very interesting 300 million for the sellers 266 for the buyers if you can buy one at around 270 275 something like that i think that could be pretty damn interesting we're also the chart is still looking perfect daily averages well away from the five day look at those minimum prices dropping off sharply so a little bit of dumping here in the damnation creating a buy opportunity um i would consider it especially if you if you have missed the boat you could say on all the advanced pi and tech to uh ship markets uh, one damnation potentially you're looking at a nice trade the deacon well these logistics frigates they're really struggling continuing to go down substantially i will say one thing though uh when the going gets tough in nullsec they can become part of fleets right it is repping for from relatively new players i mean it is tech 2 so you gotta be omega uh but they are used then that is why for instance here in january you do have that jump up to 30 million so you are looking at the lowest price of the last four months at the moment selling below the 20 million buyers coming in at 16.5 definitely a decent gap that's opened up here it is something to consider but granted it is far more risky than a lot of the others Oop, i hope that that bump against my desk didn't come true but this this is a far more risky trade clearly on this chart you can see that you're, you're basically going to be dependent on nullsec being in such a state that the, that they say we even uh, want uh, a logistics frigate uh, wing to, to to be part of the fight just that l even that little bit of extra repping against some uh, uh, of our ships is worth it so let's go let's buy them that's really what needs to happen for this type of a ship for more meta ships and more average ships also larger ships that have lower volumes um it's a different chart you can see that here for the eagle for instance fortunately here we're a little bit late just a couple days ago you could have bought them below 130 million currently well still 120 for the buyers 146 for the sellers it's just here you can clearly see daily average above five day and 20 at the moment that means that you gotta be super lucky someone that's really desperate uh, to sell their eagle into this kind of a market to the buyers it's just not happening quite often so here i think we're a little bit too late to jump in next we have the eos that's also that's a very nice wavy pattern right this is tradable buy at clo as close as possible to 250 definitely below the 300 sell at 400 million super nice profits 294 to 274 at the moment um so yeah you're, you're buying well below the 300 million isk you can definitely consider a jumping point yet another command ship uh, that is uh, possibly in buy territory the Aries is starting to drop off a little bit again we are coming together daily average starting to cross so that we're probably too late but the uh, sellers and buyers are below 50 million it's a choice to make interdictors has the same 
uh, bit that all of a sudden huge fights you need huge numbers of these interdictors with the bubbles and all of that stuff and so you do have that cell potential there as well uh, the flycatcher shooting up right now that's interesting one year high point selling for 84 million isk 52 for the buyers so they're not following suit but clearly a first sell opportunity right here then we've got the guardian that's seeing more pressure 153 to 138 so you're buying below 140 not bad not bad and we're still i think having enough momentum to be able to grab one of those definitely a possibility as well in my opinion then we get the heretic um slow and steady basically minimum price is going up maximum price is going down this is too much the in-between spot for me 46.5 47 million to 44 yeah very narrow spread not a place where i would jump in then the hound is dropping off uh selling below uh 20 buyers below 18 by quite a bit I'd need to see a bit more momentum, break this minimum, and then we're talking. But for now, I'm still not sure I'd want to jump in. Iki Tursa, pretty interesting chart here. Unfortunately, again, today's daily average looks like we may be just too late to jump in. 486 to 437. You can still try to buy one below 450, but again, will you be able to trigger that buy order? Uh, it's going to be difficult, I think. Ishtar, one year high point. 225 to 180 not sure why this one is doing so well but if you're holding some ishtars i actually have a couple of extra lying around just because it is my favorite chip um so you can sell here for a very nice profit as well best of the year the kirin back above 20 so that's not the jumping point for this one mandicore super flat above 20 that's nothing to do uh really here when it comes to trading nemesis right back on the 20 not even worth mentioning basically this is this is not enough volatility to trade in nighthawk uh, command chip dropping off that could be interesting let's see where sellers and buyers are at 340 to 317 i mean we'd love to see 300 million come into play that's apparently not gonna happen if i look at these minimum prices and then we're on our way to crossing but you can still try to probably grab a cheap nighthawk here then we get our oniros um yeah careful with the volumes there but you are selling at 140 buying below 130 that is not that bad considering the last uh, six months or so purifier let's see what it's actually at 22 nope 20.5 that's again i wouldn't jump in on these tail bombers and here is the rook another recon ship that's jumping up to 300 million pretty much almost that for the sellers so another sell opportunity then we get our saber yeah not that much of a move minimum price is 42 that's not a lot of spread scalpel up slightly here so you could have bought these below 10 a while ago i think that's when we should have made the move then scimitar that's not bad 133 to 122 volume wise that's a little bit better if you'd be looking to jump in on a logistics uh cruiser i think the scimitar looks nice and where was the guardian i think the guardian looks pretty nice as well then we've got the slip near back down from 350 as a high point but again the daily averages you can see we're just too late to jump in so what i basically think is that just before the expansion we had a few of these of these crashes uh of, of these uh, of that supply causing problems for some price points but then with everything else that's happening of course with the ttt and all of that uh we're basically just too late to take advantage advantage of some of these then we get our vagabond that's too flat and then the zarmast yeah landing on the 400 are we buying below 400 no we're not so despite just a couple of buyers i would not be jumping in on the zarmast uh but you could look into the ikutursa that is clearly uh, a move towards the lowest range for the entire year as well so i would say a little bit of uh, not necessarily volatility uh that's on the horizon but definitely some uh, differentiation here as well in the tech 2 sheep market you get some buy opportunities you get some one-year high points and some uh, some uh, one 
definitely uh, you know ships that like the recon ships that jumped up very violently all of a sudden on everything that's happening not even on that crazy volumes so clearly stuff is moving in the tech to ship market that does create uh, opportunity you may from time to time though need to be a bit aggressive or keep a very close eye on the market in order to get the best buying deals but the selling deals i think are potentially happening if you look at what's happening in the advanced boom materials next up the tech tree ships 39.25 there we go as always we start with the destroyers that are well for the confessor back above uh 60 million on higher volumes clearly that's a little bit of buying 65 to 57 million not a lot of buyers in jida for this type of a ship but clearly we're still pretty expensive then we get the Heike dropping off sharply, buyers below 60, uh, 67 to 60 million for the first buyers here. So I uh, will probably again just too late to be jumping in on 60 million, but I'm not even sure I would want to trade on that uh, at this point. Then the Jackdaw is actually jumping up. That does mean, you know, buy below 60. Currently you sell at 66, 10%, not, not that bad. You know, with a couple of ships, it is something to consider. Uh, but uh, I'm, I'm still not sure here. Then we get this vehicle dropping off, buying below 50. Um, yeah, 54 million to 47 million. It's really your choice here. Uh, I still think that they have a little bit of a problem um, in and of themselves, but they are clearly still, uh, at least some of them, like the Confessor, the Jackdaw has its uses, uh, and then the Hecate as well as a brawling ship. So there are enough potentially niche uses except for this vehicle i think that one is really look at the volumes here not as popular as the other ones so you could risk uh trading in at least these three then i would say um but overall i'd never go above more than a couple of ships because the markets are not that large and um yeah i'm not convinced that that this is really um market action rather than again same story as with like those logistics frigates a little bit of buying from larger groups that are fielding these types of fleets that's my feel on it next we've got the uh legion that's a pretty nice look at that so selling 230 on the daily average and now all of a sudden we are coming down quite a lot on the minimum prices so 203 to 182 uh, I don't think we'll cross the 180 anymore for the Legion, but this to me does feel like enough downwards momentum, lowest mini minimum price for a couple of months. You could consider trying to jump in here, grabbing a buy order for a cheap Legion. And here you get a couple of nice peaks with a couple of nice low points as well. So there's definitely some trades, in my opinion, in the cruiser markets. Then we've got the Loki also dropping off very sharply. Uh, all of a sudden 209 to what below 190 for the buyers that's this line here on the chart and you can see over the last six months or so that is not bad and again with a lot of momentum in the last week or so you could i think have a good chance of, of grabbing one then we've got the proteus that's a little bit too flat at the high point so i don't like that one and then the Tengu is starting to drop off. Are we buying below the 200? Still above the 200 million. I'd need a little bit more momentum on that pressure. Uh, but uh, yeah, if for tick tree trading, look at that uh, Legion chart here. Quite a bit of pressure. You can consider a buy order there. Same story here for the Loki. That is uh, where I would place my ISK rather than uh, some of the tech tree destroyers. But uh, other than that, for the tech tree ships, I think there's a little bit less action the less on the forefront uh, compared to take two uh, in the current uh, cycle of news you could say with the expansion with everything that's happening in nosec and the ttt uh, so overall uh, if you see buy opportunities i think that's the right move to make for take three ships because potentially i still think that ccp will eventually look at these as well marauders have been changed so they're still doing balance passes on the ships and uh, i think they might eventually jump into the tactical destroyers i think they need it the most compared to some of the take two variants for the same uh, size of hull um, in order to make the uh, price balance proposition a little bit better than what it is now and then finally for the extra product uh, I, I told you guys last week we are going to take a look at the ice products we know that pi is very expensive and the fuel blocks were actually doing all right uh, so ice products 43.45 
like that. So that's manufacturing and research, materials, ice products, and there's uh, like the isotopes and then the other. So we'll start with the isotopes. Here are helium isotopes. Expensive for the year, but nothing too crazy. Not the highest price point here at 550 for the sellers, 500 for the buyers. That's actually also pretty normal market spread in my opinion. So that looks okay. Helium isotopes is actually uh, up for the last week or so, but again, not a one year high point, nothing too crazy. Basically a little bit above average at 460 to 436. That's definitely a difference. Uh, in actual price compared to the other spread is also a little bit thinner 460 to 436 getting closer to that 10 percent but not really getting there then we get nitrogen isotopes that's a very similar chart to the helium isotopes basically a little bit above average but away from the one year high range at 486 to 462 narrow spreads they're definitely doing their own thing each of them that's a big surprise to me because we also have oxygen isotopes that's basically been going up for the month from around 500 disc to 540, 482 for the buyers. Actually, if we disregard this one sell order, potentially you actually have the largest spread here in the oxygen isotopes. Across the board though, they're basically a bit above average for the year, especially compared to the start of the year, but nothing too crazy in the isotope prices. Then we've got the other uh, ice products here are, is the heavy water, big jump, uh, a couple of weeks ago to 200 disc one year high point that has basically been recovered and here overall on the one year chart though we're basically up a little bit nothing too crazy <coughs> excuse me 136 to 124 for the liquid ozone also right up a little bit not the highest range so, so nothing drastic 140 to 136 pretty narrow um spread and then strontium is going back down to the 3000 35 to 3000 so just coming down from that two month plateau at the highest price range overall we're pretty expensive but nothing too crazy so for ice miners just like with Isaac miners i think it's actually all quite okay to sell uh, at this point uh, for most miners i would say it's okay to sell holding back a little bit when prices dip a little bit too much uh, I think is also a possibility but uh, for this week uh, I would say across the board uh, those that uh, make the most basic of products that mine those products are in a pretty good market here uh, for both mineral mining and ice mining for these kinds of products so pretty interesting week for sure and uh, I think it will take some time for everything to settle and to become clear as to what's happening in the markets in EVE Online. That's it for this EVE Talk guys. Thank you very much for watching and as always, I'll see you next time.